I've got a visitor. Hello, Mr. Man. Oh, yeah. He was just sleeping. everyone and welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be my 2024 language goals I will break this video up into two parts this first part is going to be the language goals and then part two is going to be a notion template so without further ado here is my 2024 language goals so first I'm going to break it down into five overall goals that I have for this year that apply to any language that I'm learning and then I'm going to break it down into quarters because I feel like that would make language learning in 2024 a lot less stressful because 2023 didn't go as planned. I basically dropped every single language in 2023. I was feeling myself too much. I was too confident. I was overzealous. I really thought that I could do it all in 2023 and a lot of unplanned but planned things happened in 2023 that I wasn't expecting to happen in 2023 but it happened. That makes sense. Anyways, 2023 didn't go how I wanted to go language-wise, so 2024, we're thinking smarter and not harder. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first goal that I have for the overall language learning path of 2024 is to study at least 15 to 30 minutes a day. If I'm not doing anything, I can at least review or study something for 15 to 30 minutes. I work a full-time job and I have two children to take care of so after work I am tired and language learning is the last thing on my mind but it won't kill me to take 15 to 30 minutes to just review something or look over my notes or something that I learned the day before because if I don't look over something for one day that one day is gonna turn into two days next thing you know it's gonna be three days and then the whole week and then the whole weekend and I'm like I can start fresh on Monday that literally never happens so if i can at least study for 15 to 30 minutes a day i should be straight i'm fine with that number two in the overall goals category is i want to try immersion for the languages that i'm trying to learn i don't know how successful i can be at immersion but i'm gonna try it anyways because it's a very interesting approach and it's probably better than what i did in 2023 which was nothing I did look up different immersion approaches, one being AJAT for Japanese, Krashen's theory, and things like that. So I'm going to try immersion this year and hope for the best. Number three, I want to enjoy the process. I stressed myself out so much this year because I kept giving myself time limits and dates that I need to get stuff done by and the stuff just didn't happen because... I was so stressed about life and I want to enjoy learning languages as much as possible this year and not think too hard about the journey. I was thinking way too hard about how to learn a language instead of just doing it and that wasn't the smartest decision nor did it make language learning fun because I kept stacking on resources on resources on resources and it became overwhelming. So for these languages, in order to enjoy it, I'm just going to stick with a couple of resources in the beginning and then add on when I get more intermediate because it was too much resources to go through and it was too much. So I, I'm not going to do that in 2024. I'm going to enjoy it to the fullest. Number four, I want to make language learning work for me. So like I said, I work a full-time job and after work I'm tired and I felt like I had to force myself to sit down and learn a language, which took all the enjoyment and fun out of language learning. So instead of trying to force myself to sit down and learn a language, I'm going to make it work for my schedule. And you would think that's kind of like a no-brainer, like duh, but I guess it's not because that's not what I did. So like this is literally why I'm going to Asia in like three months with basically the most minimum of minimum knowledge all i know how to say is basically my name and i can't just be walking the streets like ah, like it's not giving what it needs to give it's not giving polyglot it's not giving intellectual human being it's giving i know one sentence and i'm rolling with it and lastly number five don't 
base my language learning timeline on someone else's timeline. That is another thing that's kind of like common sense. But like I said, I got caught up in the hype of adding resources on resources and watching all of these YouTube videos on how other people are learning these languages. And I'm thinking, well, if they can do it in three months, so can I. If they can do it in two weeks, so can I. But like, you have to realize your life is not the same as someone else's life who's online. That person may work for themselves or have their own company, so they have the time to learn 6,000 languages in a day. You do not, girl. You don't. Be realistic. Base it off of your timeline and your timeline only. So with that, I am now going to break it down by each language, and instead of doing yearly goals this time, I want to do quarterly goals. Starting off with Japanese, in the first quarter, I want to complete the Remember the Kanji book, as well as Genki 1, and I think I also have the Genki workbook that goes with the first textbook. I think I do. I can't remember. It's probably buried somewhere after I moved, but I want to finish both of those books within the first quarter. I also want to do Anki every single day. That's something I can do for like five minutes, if anything. And I also want to work through the Tay Kim's Guide to Grammar. I've heard a lot of people talk about that website and it's free, so I will most definitely be utilizing that within this first quarter of learning Japanese. I do want to truly focus on immersion for Japanese because, like I said, I will be going to Japan and Korea literally in three months and I want to get around decently. <laughs> so I want to really focus on active and passive immersion, both. So for active immersion for Japanese, I did start already this year. I want to start with first things first being anime. I started watching Haikyuu and what I did was watch it one time with English subtitles, a second time without subtitles at all and just focus on the listening, and then a third time while doing something else. So basically the third time is when you do passive immersion. For passive immersion, I could listen to YouTubers while I work. Something that I don't necessarily have to focus on. It's not like they're giving me much information. I do follow a couple gamers. This other girl who is Japanese who is currently in Korea, but she still speaks Japanese. And so she kind of vlogs her daily life in Korea. So those are some of examples of passive immersion that I can do. Quarter two for Japanese. I want to reach either N5 or N4 within the second quarter of the year for Japanese. I feel like that's potentially doable. I want to up the immersion. For quarter one, I was just going to do immersion when I can and when I feel like it, at least once a day. No specific time limit, but for quarter two, I want to at least try for four hours a day of immersion in Japanese so that I'm not just completely winging it by quarter two. Quarter one, I'm giving myself some grace by just doing it whenever in the day, but quarter two, I want to get more schedule-like. I also want to start sentence mining in quarter two. Fingers crossed. I don't know a lot about sentence mining, but I feel like I kind of get the gist of it. So in quarter two, I feel like that'll be a good space to start sentence mining because I'll have finished Remember the Kanji and I'll have finished the Genki textbook. So I'll basically have a basic knowledge of Japanese grammar by quarter two. So I feel like that's the perfect time to start sentence mining. Quarter three and four. I'm almost gonna wing it. <laughs> quarter three, I kind of have like a little bit of idea of what I want to do. But basically quarter three, I want to read some beginner manga or maybe start reading NHK Easy News. Easy things, small things to read like that or maybe articles or blog posts or some short, short posts, short things that are easy to read. I feel like maybe I'll be able to start reading at that time. Maybe quarter two if I'm lucky, which I'm probably not. I really do want to start taking italki lessons by quarter three if I don't start in quarter two. And then I feel like maybe quarter three is where I want to start using other people. That sounds bad. <laughs> using other people as a resource, so I'll probably start using HelloTalk at that time and try to converse with natural Japanese speakers. And quarter four, I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> Whatever happens at that time happens. And now for Spanish. So for quarter one of learning Spanish, I want to practice immersion probably around 30 minutes a day. 
that's something that I can do, and I'm not going to specifically focus between active or passive, but it's just whatever I feel like doing that day, because I have a bit of an upper hand in Spanish compared to the other languages, so I feel like I can get away with doing passive immersion more than active immersion. I want to read at least one blog or article or short story or anything once a week within the first quarter, because I feel like I'm better at listening and speaking over reading for some reason. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but I feel like I am. I do also want to start sentence mining in the first quarter of Spanish, because like I said, I have an upper hand in Spanish than I do any other language. So I feel like I'll be able to manage that. I do want to start using HelloTalk and start speaking and listening more. It'll just be easier, because it's Spanish. Quarter two, I want to continue sentence mining and probably start journaling and writing. I could do it in quarter one, but I don't want to give myself too much to do. I'll already be doing all of this in Japanese, so I don't want to give myself too much to do in Spanish or any in these other languages because Japanese is going to take up the majority of my time. Read at least three things in a week, whether it be blogs, posts, stories, comics, anything. I want to up the level of time that I use for immersion to probably two hours a day, maybe two to five hours a day. Like I said, the majority of it could be passive because I'm a busy lady. Quarter three, I also want to start taking italki lessons in Spanish at this time. I'm giving myself a lot of grace because the beginning of the year this year is going to be very hectic, so I'm giving myself a lot of grace for these languages. And I think I might want to start my own blog in Spanish and start making maybe Instagram posts or YouTube videos in full-on Spanish without any English. Quarter four for Spanish. I, between quarter three and quarter four for Spanish, I think I might want to take, I can't think of it off the top of my head what the language learning test is, officially is, but I think between quarter three and quarter four, I want to start taking the language test for Spanish. And lastly, we have Korean. So for quarter one in Korean, I do want to start using howtolearnkorean.com. Before, I was using Talk To Me in Korean, but as some of you might know, it is no longer a free service and I don't have the money for that. So, I am looking for free.com and I believe How To Learn Korean is completely free, I think. But I'm going to start with using that and I'm also going to start using Anki. Not as much as Japanese, but enough to kind of memorize sentences. I did end up buying the Talk To Me in Korean the first book and the study book that goes along with it so I will probably use that as well since I already have it and I will start watching more k-dramas and listening to k-pop more as part of my immersion for Korean and I feel like compared to Japanese Korean might be easier to learn so I feel like I might just start sentence mining from the beginning for Korean because I feel like it might just be easier but I also could be dooming myself and I want to do at least three hours a week for immersion. I feel like that's doable, especially because there are tons and tons and tons of K-dramas out there that everybody and their mom watches. There's so many recommendations on TikTok that I could find. There's just a lot of Korean media to ingest, so I feel like three hours a week is not that bad. For quarter two, if I don't start sentence mining in quarter one for Korean, I will officially start in quarter two, but if I do start, I'm gonna just continue with what that is. For quarter two of Korean, I want to up the immersion to probably six hours a week. Like I said, for quarter one, there's so much Korean media that's out there right now and that's really popular right now. So I will have ample amount of resources to immerse myself with. I do want to find more YouTubers to watch and so that it's not just K-dramas and so that, you know, it's natural way of speaking instead of just over dramatic speaking like in K-dramas. Um, but I do want to find a lot more YouTubers to watch as well. And podcasts, and audiobooks maybe, if I'm feeling a little spicy. For quarter three of Korean, I officially want to start using HelloTalk and talking to people because I feel like that'll be enough time to learn the basics, get by a little bit, and maybe start italki lessons as well. For quarter three and quarter four, I'm just kind of winging it this year. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself for the future because like I said, it was the getting started in 2023 that wasn't giving what it needed to give. So this time around for planning, I focused mainly on the first two quarters because getting started is always the hardest part. So as long as I get started, 
I should be fine. But those are my language learning goals for 2024. I hope you enjoyed it and I will be seeing you in the next part where I give you my 2024 language learning notion. Bye! <laughs>